The Blue Ember Boys. And indeed, she is hot like an ember. You've probably heard a lot about this $100 XLR mic, and for good reason. A lot of people refer to the Blue Ember over here, that's an awkward gesture, refer to the Blue Ember over here as the best $100 XLR microphone, and I do personally believe that that title is well warranted, and I endorse that. Oh damn, Doc, you got a Go XLR? What can you do with that thing? Do you wanna come through and do what we do, do you? Now besides the blue ember over here, you're probably going to hear a lot of people talk about the Audio-Technica AT2020 for another good condenser XLR microphone. That's a good mic. This is better. Let's check it out. All right, boys, over here at the unboxing station, I know you can't see my face, but that's okay. You can see the mic. So the Blue Ember over here, an XLR studio condenser microphone for recording and streaming. Open, detailed sound. So Blue's been around since the Civil War, literally. Theodore Roosevelt and General Custer used to lay down beats in the studio using a Blue microphone. So slipping it out of its little sleeve right here, you have this matte black box here. Opening it up, you will have some documentation. You read it, I don't know how to read, so we're gonna toss that aside. I do really like this little message here. It says, your voice goes here, in the front of the capsule, not on the top. A lot of people, I guess, grab these microphones, not just this mic, but any mic, and they wanna talk into the top of it. That is not where the receiver is. It will be blocking your sound from there. You wanna speak into the front where the blue logo is. You get your microphone, which I have to say looks absolutely gorgeous. It is this nice bluish silver here, which does not show any fingerprints whatsoever because it is a matte finish here. Now you will get fingerprints down here on this kind of gunmetal aluminum area here, which is also up here by the capsule and then also on the blue logo itself. But honestly, you're probably not gonna be handling the mic. However, you're probably not gonna be handling this mic very often once you get it set up on its boom arm. Speaking of boom arm, it does come with this adapter here, which is all metal. Not just the threads here, but this entire thing. Has a little blue branded adjustment lever right here. And this is what I use to mount to my uh, blue compass boom arm. Now the microphone itself has a very slim, sleek design, which is good for a couple reasons we'll touch on in just a moment. But the build quality on this thing is phenomenal. This feels much heavier than you would imagine. You look at it, you're like, oh, it's tiny. You get it out of the box. It has a good weight to it. It's borderline heavy, especially for the size. Also, I'm squeezing this capsule as hard as I possibly can right now, and there's no flex in it, there's no give whatsoever. This is incredibly durable, and it does have somewhat of an onboard uh, or built-in pop filter. However, I still would recommend getting a external pop filter for it. They sell little foam ones that slide over the top like a condom or you can get a uh, external circular pot filter to, to cover the front of it. On the bottom, you have your XLR plugs as well as some very, very nice durable threads. And that is where you are going to mount this bad boy right here. You literally just put it on and thread it in like that and then take the metal threading right here and attach it to your boom arm of choice, whether that's a whether that's a Rode PSA or a Blue Compass or a, frame, a Gator Frameworks. This will work with it. All right, boys, over here at the Stormtrooper desktop with the Blue Ember on the Blue Compass boom arm right here. And I gotta say, I am a big fan of Blue. I've been using their products for a long time. And me personally, when it comes to microphones, I think the highest quality, the best reliability, best sound quality, and best bang for buck would come down to Sure, Blue, and Rode probably because they've been around for decades. They have a solid track record for a reason they make good high quality products and Blue is no different. I, I use the Blue, like many of you guys, I started out using a USB microphone and I had tested dozens of different USB microphones and the one that I landed on and used as my daily driver for almost two and a half years was the Blue Yeti Blackout over here, which is great. It does which is a great mic, has multiple capsule patterns for different situations. Granted, 90% of the time you'll keep it in cardioid pattern. And this is a great mic. But when I was ready to make the jump to XLR, I knew I wanted to keep it in the blue ecosystem. I already had their boom arm. I already had the shock mount, which by the way, I do not run with the blue ember. Like I mentioned, the Audio-Technica AT2020 also retails for $100. However, however, this microphone not only cosmetically looks better, which does matter because not only are you seeing it, but also if you are a streamer, podcaster, YouTuber, most likely your microphone is in the shot as well. And I constantly get questions on stream and on my YouTube videos. Hey, what kind of microphone is that? Wow, that's a cool mic, Kevin, what is that? You'd be surprised how many people are gonna inquire about what microphone you're using. Also, it is very, very small and sleek in comparison to the AT2020 or any microphone. Like look at the Blue Yeti over here, for example, much bigger microphone. So if you are using this for streaming, this takes up less of your peripheral view when you're gaming. So you don't have to worry about this huge microphone 
constantly in your peripheral vision when you're trying to focus on your gameplay. So that is a huge deal for me. Also, like I said, that build quality, this thing could take some drops, knocks, and bumps, and it's not going to disintegrate on you. Despite its small, sleek size, it is incredibly durable and incredibly rugged. And finally, the sound profile. In comparison to the AT2020, in my opinion, to my ear canals, this has more of a rich, warm vanilla tone to it. Now granted, now granted you can get that radio-esque sound profile, that presence out of any microphone with some plugins, whether it's a physical compressor, noise gate, de reverb or you're using a USB microphone and you're running VST plugins like I did for the longest time to add myself that rich uh, equalizer radio-esque presence but you you naturally get a certain level of that with the blue ember and then on top of that you dial in your settings with your mixer or audio interface and this thing sounds phenomenal you're basically just going to talk the loudest that you ever get on stream. You don't have to be yelling in the mic or anything like that, or just absolutely just sucking on the mouth hole or anything like that. But what you're going to do is come over here to makeup gain and boost this up anywhere between four to seven decibels until that kind of uh, evens out. I'll play a couple of audio clips of this microphone. I'll kind of integrate them throughout the video via post editing. However, if you watch any of my last videos from probably the last month and a half or so, this is the microphone that I've been on. So the Blue Ember, primarily why I like it is for one, it is very, very small and sleek. So like I said, when I'm streaming or even just shooting YouTube videos, I'm trying to read an article about some gaming news or something. I don't want this big bulky microphone taking up half my view. Two, the sound quality is phenomenal. I'm always at one pretty good consistent volume. So that way, obviously my viewers aren't having to constantly adjust their headphones or speakers because my audio is all over the place. So that's pretty sexy. Even before I did any vocal processing or added any effects, de -er, compressor, noise gate, equalizer, it just sounded good out of the box. Now, with all those effects on there, I got a voice and a face for radio now. And then cosmetically, it looks gorgeous. Granted, looks are completely subjective. Everyone sees beauty differently, but I think it looks absolutely amazing. And obviously a lot of other people do because I get questions about it all the time. And last but not least, it holds the blue name on there. So even though it is an entry level $100 microphone, it still has that blue badge on there, which means it still has the same quality control process and still has the awesome customer service. It's gonna do it guys. If you enjoyed this video, liking it helps it to get seen by more people, which in turn helps me grow this little channel, which I do greatly, greatly appreciate. Subscribe for more content like this. I cover a ton of news in the gaming community and industry, as well as tutorials helping you get set up streaming and YouTubing. I'll see you boys in the next video. Peace.